The Challenge of the Yukon. And King Huskies! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. In the light of the moon, the front of the bank at Dobie City seemed quiet and empty. But in the small office at the back of the building, voices were raised in argument. Sitting back in his chair behind a huge desk, the banker, Mac McDermott, watched the man facing him coolly. You better keep a civil tongue in your head, Sam. I got a tongue in my head, all right, and I aim to use it. I ain't seeing any more. He looks mighty determined to me. If what he says is true, if you're keeping more than half of the gold, Mac... What if it is true? Who does the thinking for this outfit? Not any of you. You better start thinking, then. Because if he gets to the Mountie, it'll be jail for all of us. There's no reason why he should get to anybody. If you see what I mean. Try and stop him. He's mad, hopping mad. And if it means going to jail himself, I'd lay money down. He'd go through with it just to make sure you get there. And you two are so handy with your guns. You stopped those prospectors, didn't you? How? You mean we should... Yes. And now, before he meets anyone who'll listen to him. As the banker here, I can't take any chances. But nobody will suspect you two. Well, I always say when there's work to be done, no use putting it off. Glad there's one man of action around here, at least. Come on, Slim. I'm ready. You don't have to worry none about Sam. He ain't likely to meet anyone he can talk to. Just make sure of that. I see now. These must be his tracks here. I guess he went this way. I wonder if he got on his sled. No, I don't think so. If I was in his shoes, I'd stay right here. I hate to do this, Pete. Yeah, it's him or us, and I never did like jails. Look. Huh? There he is. Yeah. He's just walking around. Well, he ain't going to be walking along. Got your gun? Yeah. Then let him have it and beat it quick. Now tell him who'll hear the shot and come running. Riding into Dobie City late that night, Sergeant Preston glanced about the darkened settlement. Well, we'll have to go pounding on town marshal's door, I guess, King. Unless we make camp on the corner of Main Street. Hmm, it's quiet. Quiet and peaceful. What is it, King? Hmm? What's wrong, fella? Yeah, maybe we won't have to knock on Tom's door. He'll hear us coming. Uh, King. He's turning off to the left. Ho, you huskies. Ho, ho. All right, now. What is it, eh? At this hour of the night, there can't be... Well, there's someone in the snow. He... He's trying to move. What? What's wrong? Who... Sam. Sam Carson. Is it? Preston. Sergeant Preston. Yes. Now that's a bad wound. We'll have to no, fix it. No, no. It ain't no use. I'm done for. How did it happen, Sam? Who did it tell me? He didn't. I should have known. Who, Sam? Who? Dead. If only we'd found him sooner. So that's what you wanted me to see, King. But what was he going to tell me? He started to name the man who shot him. The next morning, miners and trappers crowded the streets and stores of the small settlement. Even at that early hour, the cafe was crowded. Bangs Murdoch often remarked his business began with the rising sun and his doors remained open as long as there were men at the bar. 
Sergeant Preston's eyes skimmed over the crowd till he saw Bangs at the far end of the room pouring drinks. Mike, you know, doggone well I can beat you at poker any day in the year. Even with my eyes closed. Why well, in tarnation ain't you ready to put down the cash and back up your boast? Because I swore off gambling to please a... Fr- Sergeant Preston. Say, when would you get in? Hello, Bangs. Hello, Mike. If I'd known you was coming, I... what'll you have? It's on the house. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> it's kind of hard to offer the sergeant any hospitality in a cafe, ain't it? In my case, just trying to start up a game of cards, Sergeant. Ah, if I hadn't made that promise to you not to gamble anymore, I'd be a richer man right now. <laughs> You're a poorer one. Bangs, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Me? Sure. If it's private, we can go back here. I'll see you later, Mike. Sure. <laughs> Nobody bother us in here. What have you got on your mind, Sergeant? Now, sit down and make yourself comfortable. Whatever it is, you sure look sour enough about it. What's wrong? Bangs, where were you last night? Well, I was here, like I always am. Till what time? About two o'clock, I guess. Then where'd you go? Home. Well, Shorty McLeod and me went over to the hotel. Talked for about an hour and I went to bed. Look here, Sergeant. You're leading up to something. What is it? Yes, I am leading up to something, Bangs. Sam Carson was murdered last night. Sam? Well, I'll be... Where? Near Olson's place. King and I were riding in. King found him. Must have happened pretty... Hey, now wait a minute, Sergeant. You don't think that... That's why I'm here. What do you mean, that's why you're here? I didn't even see him last night. Well, you see, he was pretty far gone when we found him. Too far gone to be able to save. I asked him who shot him. He tried to answer me. And he got this much out. Bam. Then he died before he finished it. Bam? Yes. You'll admit your name isn't a common one. Oh, it's a nickname. Everywhere he calls me Bam. Well, that's just the point. But I can prove it. I can prove where I was. Sergeant, I might have gambled a lot. I admit I ain't stayed to any straight and narrow path, but ever since I gave you my word that it was all over, I ain't turned a card. You've got to believe me. I want to believe you. And I certainly hope you can prove where you were. But look at it this way. Why would I want to kill Sam? He never did nothing to me. He spent a lot of time in the cafe gambling, didn't he? Yes. That ain't reason to kill him, is it? Bam. Three letters. B-A-M. Not a name beginning that way in the Yukon. Except mine. Except yours. Bernard Randall, Bronson Moore. And even those two names are unusual. I came to Dobie City on a slim clue, Bangs. For two months, I've been trying to find who's in back of the gold robberies and murders in these parts. You bump right into another one, eh? Uh, Banker Max says if the robberies don't stop, they'll ruin the bank. Yes. Most of the prospectors were on their way to the bank when they were robbed. It's getting so the miners won't bank. Bank. Banker Mac McDermott. I wonder... What's eating you now, Sergeant? No one knows about Sam yet except Tom Marshall and you. Any reason for keeping it quiet? I wanted to talk to you about it first. But if word were to get around that Sam didn't die... But you said he did die. He did. This room, Bangs. Where does that door lead to? Outside. Why? Does anyone use it beside yourself? No, never. Well, lock it up. Keep everyone else out. Yeah, sure. I still don't see You will. You... Now, Bangs, listen closely. Here's what I want you to do, if you will. Go over to the... In his office at the bank, Mac McDermott hurriedly called a meeting with the two men who'd been with him the night before. As soon as Pete returned with his companion, the banker accused them hotly. You could have taken time, to be sure. Yeah, I guess we should have stood there holding the gun on him till morning. Uh, who shot him? I did. Once? Once. He dropped right where he stood, boss. I could have swore Slim got him. Well, he didn't. If it hadn't been for that Mountie. Now, listen to me. And if you've got a brain between you, maybe you can remember what I say. He's over in the back room at the Silver Dollar Cafe. Murdoch's taking care of him. He hasn't gained consciousness yet. And it's up to us to see that he doesn't. Yeah, but listen, boss. That back room over at the Silver Dollar is different from letting him have it on the street. There are windows in the room, aren't there? And there's a door... Meet me here tonight, after dark. And just to be sure there's no slip, this time I'm going with you.
That night, the two men met the banker, and together they set out for the Silver Dollar Cafe. They were sure the raucous laughter and loud voices in the front of the cafe would cover any noise they might make. Streets were deserted, and darkness covered them. There's the cafe ahead. Back of it's all dark. That'll make it easier. First, we'll try the door. If nobody's with him. I ain't hangering to bump into Bangs or the Mountie. If anyone's with him, we'll get him through the window. And them, too. Remember, if he opens his mouth, the two of you are as good as dead. And you, too, remember that. Quiet now. <coughs> Whose dog's that? Uh, don't worry about any mutt. He probably is a stray Malamute. Now, wait till I go over to the window. <coughs> ah, cuss that mutt. Shut up. Who'll pay any attention to a dog barking? It'll be the last time he barks it. That's funny. I could swear I've seen that critter somewhere before. You're just nervous. Yeah, look. There's no one in there with Sam. Yeah. He's on the couch over near the wall. Come on, let's go in and get this over with. Say, it's unlocked. Come on. Shall I turn up the lamp? He's sleeping. What are you turning up for, you fool? You had less light to see in last night, and you missed him. This time, make sure. <laughs> You'll never know what hit him. Come on now, get out of here. Mix with the crowd out in front. Not so fast, McDermott. What in the question? I thought I recognized that mutt. King sure did a good job of warning us that a pack of skunks was coming. So you came back to finish the job, did you, Mac? You ain't so smart after all, Marty. Put up your hands. You better put that gun away, Slim. <laughs> Should I let him have it, boss? Well. For a minute, I was so surprised, I forgot you boys were holding guns. <laughs> no. No, don't let him have it here. You wouldn't dare to kill a Monty Mac, and you know it. It's suicide. Not for me, it isn't. Because there won't be anyone around to tell about it. I've been wanting to see the sergeant here in a spot like this for a long time. I always thought as much. Every time I looked into those greedy, murderous eyes of yours. I guess the same thing will happen to us that happened to Taylor. Abner Keller. All the rest of the prospectors on their way to your bank. As a matter of fact, you're right. That's exactly what's going to happen. All right, now get moving. Hey, Sergeant, ain't you... Shut up. Just keep going. You heard him. What about Sam? Well, <laughs> somebody will find him in a couple of hours. This time, his mouth is shut for good. Well... Empty-handed, the Mountie don't look so brave, does he? You're forgetting something, Mac. My partner. Look out for that mud, Slim. Pull the gun on me, will you? No! Let go of my arm! Help! You got the gun, Sergeant? Yes, yes, I've got it. Stop me, Dermot! You won't take me! Not for King. You'll get him. I never saw a dog like that in all my life. Where's... Oh, Pete here got caught by a haymaker he wasn't expecting. Nice work, Bangs. Oh! Oh! Well, McDermott didn't get far. When he finds out there was firing at a blanket roll. <laughs> blanket roll? That's right, Slim. You did kill Sam the other night. Bang circulated the story that he'd only been wounded. You believed it. This one's coming too, Sergeant. On your feet. Come on. Start moving, Slim. You too, Pete. We'll see how King's making out with his partner. Stay away from me. You hear? Good work, King. All right, get in line, McDermott. This parade is headed straight for the jail. Yes, King, thanks to you, another case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. <laughs>